So everyone in the class explaining to you the concept of repo and reverse repo from the segment of money market securities of equity valuation, fixed income securities, not equity valuation in our class and security valuation chapter from ICI, right? Cool Sahib. So I would request it's fine because we need to anyhow complete this. If you feel like leaving it, it's fine. You're, it's all your freedom. It's already 11.55. Kindly consider watching up the backup. Don't skip the backup else it will be difficult. Alright. So repo and reverse repo people in the class we need to get started with. As a kind of money market not really instrument but a borrowing. So as we realize treasury bill, commercial paper, certificate of deposits all these things if you realize are ultimately kind of borrowing. So even this one everyone is a kind of borrowing. But how does the borrowing happen? Let me tell you the scenario people. Suppose there is this bank, right, who's in need of money. So this bank will go to RBI. And after going to RBI, it will ask that I have certain government of India bonds with me, right. Can I sell these securities to you? And against that security, can you lend me an amount, right? Being a bank, I have certain securities available with me, government of India bond long term securities. So I want to sell those long term securities and against it receive an amount from the RBI which is for a period of short term because I need to borrow for short term. Cool. And if you realize this is not a kind of borrowing transaction if you literally look at it. Because obviously I have not explained the thing entirely, but you might feel sir it is not even a borrowing transaction. If I have to sell the security to someone, why would I go to RBI as a bank? I can go anywhere else and sell the security. Wait. Once you sell the security to the RBI and borrow and, and take an amount, you at the same time also enter into a repurchase agreement. To the RBI, you say that see RBI I am selling the security right now. Right, against which you are giving me an amount. But on a future date, for example, I need to borrow for 10 days. Which means today you enter into an agreement with the RBI that after 10 days RBI, I will come to you, I, I will repurchase what I am. I will repurchase what I am selling to you. So today when I sold this to you, later on I will repurchase it from you. So hence we call the transaction to be a repo transaction which comes from the word repurchase repo, right? Where I sell something and enter into agreement to repurchase it. But the point again remains the same, sir, so still we don't find it to be a borrowing transaction. We rather see it to be a selling transaction where I can sell something in the market and where I can buy something from the market where is the borrowing. I will explain that to you, but other than that, are you able to connect to me, Dhananjay, Sahil, Omkar, all other live and recorded people in the class. I will now complete the story to make you people realize how is it a borrowing transaction. So let me now get into the details of it. Sir, how much amount you would be able to borrow? or how much amount you would be able to receive as a bank, how much amount you would be able to receive from the bank, right, from RBI when you sell it, right, will depend on the amount of security you are selling. So for example, for the sake of simplicity, let me say that the government of India bond has a market price of 98. So RBI will give you 98 rupees when you sell the security to RBI. Which means initially can I relate it to the borrowing transaction that I am giving my security, not selling it. I am giving my security to RBI in the form of collateral. When you borrow something, you have to give something in the form of collateral, right? So that security is a collateral actually and what I am getting back is the amount of borrowing of rupees 98. Everyone, this is 98 written over here. To start with, can you now sense it at a borrowing transaction? Cool. But sir, what happens on the day of repurchase? 
So the amount of borrowing depends on CMP. This is agreed. This is fine. But the beauty which will make you people realize is a borrow that its transaction is a borrowing is that the amount of borrowing happens on CMP, but the amount of repurchase does not happen at CMP. Rather, how does it happen? Let me tell you. Sir, if it would be a normal borrowing and repayment, <clears throat> how should the transaction look to you? Sir, I sell the security, I give the security as collateral and I borrow the amount. Correct? Now, how will the repayment happen? You will get the security back against at the time of repayment. You can get the collateral back and you will make the repayment. Which means, do you agree? Even if it is repurchased, it looks the same. You repurchase the security back and you make the repayment. Correct? But sir, again, why isn't it a simple... Why isn't it a, you know, selling the security and simply repurchasing? Because you don't repurchase at CMP. Rather, what is the price at which you repurchase or what is the price at which you make the repayment is most important. People, this was the amount of borrowing of rupees 98 that was agreed. Even this amount will I will change later on. But for the sake of simplicity, can I say 98 you borrowed? So repayment, which was based on CMP, but the repayment everyone. When you make a repayment to anyone, can I say that is simply borrowing plus the amount of interest. Hence, I'm saying this is not simple selling the something in the market and buying it back because in the market when you buy back, you have to pay an amount equal to CMP. But over here, it's not CMP. It is at a price called as repurchase price, which is nothing but the repayment price, the amount of borrowing. Let's assume this is 98. So repayment will be 98 plus repo rate that prevails in the market. That rate of borrowing at which RBI is ready to borrow, borrow is lend to you, is RBI is ready to lend to you at which you are able to borrow from RBI is that rate of 10% for a period of 10 days. So RBI will say you are borrowing 98 rupees for a period of 10 days, rate in the market is 10%. So let me calculate, sir, 0.1, what is the rate? How, how do I calculate the future value? Simple, 98 rupees into 1 plus point 1.1 percent but again only for 10 out of 365 days so it will be 0.1 on my calculator into 10 divided by 365 plus 1 multiplied by 98 give me 98.268 simply say 98.27 rupees as the repurchase price which means do you realize even if I call to be the repurchase price, but it is not a simple repurchase that happens from the market. Rather, everyone, the amount of repurchase price is equal to the amount of repayment, which would have happened if I would have borrowed this amount of 98, 98 or at point zero. People, are you guys realizing that even if I say that I will repurchase, but the repurchase price, this price is decided considering the interest which is nothing but the repayment of the borrowing and hence I can say that the repo transaction is nothing but a borrowing and repayment transaction, therefore a part of money market securities and obviously a fixed income security. Requesting, the story is not over yet, but could I explain to you the transaction broadly because now I am going to take you to the details of it, everyone. Durga, Omkar, Dhananjay, all the live and recorded people in the class, please tell me. Settled are you? Quick. Because if yes, I will take you to the next level of it people now the detailings how many of you remember the concept of flat price or clean price and also the concept of full price or dirty price that we learned people let me peep let me guys let me take you people to the again bonds discussion do you remember that full price is a price which is inclusive of accrued interest 
This is the total price. You remember, this is the total price to be paid when you sell the bond to someone or when you purchase the bond from someone. Right? From that, if you deduct the accrued interest, what you get is flat price. And what is the price at which bond trades in the market is everyone clean price, flat price. Which means if the flat price has been given to me, I will have to add the amount of accrued interest to decide the to determine the full price, which means the price to be paid to complete the transaction. You remember the basics, everyone? Which basics, those basics are to be implemented in this discussion, everyone, with such a beauty. In the market, suppose bond has a price of rupees 96. In the market, the bonds are traded at a price of rupees 96. Omkar, you might feel disconnected on this part, but you will be able to relate to it ultimately. The bond is trading at a price of 96. Do you agree? Trading at a price of 96 means it is a clean price because bond always trades at clean price. So if 96 is clean price, I need to calculate the accrued interest and find out the full price. Why? Why? Because when I sell the bond to someone, someone is supposed to pay to me the full price, not the clean price. Which means everyone in the class, what is this transaction? This transaction should ideally happen at full price. So first I should know the full price. Calculation number one. Agreed? Calculation number two. Suppose you go to the bank to take a loan. You give to the bank gold worth rupees 100. Will the government give you the loan of rupees 100? Or it will deduct some margin and it will give you the amount of loan which is lower, for example, rupees 90. You have to realize that the gold price is subject to fluctuation. So if price of the gold will fall, the amount of collateral will be the amount less than the amount of loan. Which means, do you agree that against a 100 rupee gold collateral, bank will not give you 100 rupee loan. Similarly, when you give to the RBI a bond of rupees 98, inclusive of everything, full price, the RBI is not going to give you a loan of rupees 98. It will deduct some margin for safety called as repo margin, everyone. Which means the actual amount of loan will be calculated using first calculation of full price and second calculation of deducting repo margin from the total dirty price requesting your responses could you understand how do i calculate the amount of borrowings everyone with complete clarity so let's imagine it is 98 rupees and let's imagine 5 percent is the repo margin so 98 minus 5 percent is 93.1 would be the amount of borrowing and that is what is called as first leg or start proceed how much amount you will ultimately receive as a bank has to go through two calculations. On this amount which is being borrowed, interest will be obviously calculated and that is how repurchase price will be decided. Everyone, 95 rupees the amount of borrowing for a period of 10 days because my repo continued for 10 days, my amount of borrowing is for 10 days and the rate of repo bar RBI, rate of repo by RBI is 10%, right? So for a period of 10 days, if I charge a 10% interest on 95 to become 95.26 and that is what is people in the class is repayment price, repayment proceed or second leg or repurchase price requesting your responses could i everyone convey to you the entire concept one the terminologies start proceed repurchase price repo margin full price everyone everything second leg repo transaction duration second thing and third the three calculation involved clean price full price uh, i mean flat price full price the repo margin and the interest calculation that's all everyone, the class is needed to you to be able to do any question of repo that CA final AFM and CA CMA final SFM has. I need your response, how much out of 10 people in the class are you guys settled? How much out of 10 are you people settled? I need a response. Because if you allow me, I would want to take 